we have uh, Dr. Vinay Pillai, who will be talking about corneal hysteresis. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, uh, corneal biomechanics uh, involves the study of deformation and equilibrium of corneal tissues with the application of those forces. Uh, the cells, fibers, and the you know ground material matrix of any tissue determine the mechanical properties of any 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 of these tissue. Biomechanics is the link between the structure and the function of the cornea. It helps us to assess the pathological changes corneal tissue undergoes during different ocular and systemic conditions and predicts the outcome to various various therapeutics and refractive uh, uh, therapies. So some of the factors which might affect biomechanics, I mean extrinsic factors like IOP, ciliary muscles, extraocular muscles, atmospheric pressure, lids, then within the eye or off the eye like actinometry, viscosity, elasticity, hydration, all those things can uh, uh, produce an effect on the you know, biomechanical status of each tissue. So what is hysteresis? First described by uh, James Alfred Ewing. It's a property of the physical systems that do not instantly follow the forces applied to them, but react slowly or do not return completely to their orgi original state. Now, corneal hysteresis probably may be defined as the difference in the inward and outward pressure values obtained during the dynamic bidirectional applination process employed in ORA as a result of viscous uh, dampening of the cornea. The uh, viscoelastic property of the cornea is a measure of its stiffness and rigidity. Uh, what, what it translates to it means that you know any pressure causes the deformation of the material. But on release of this pressure, it tries to return to its original shape slowly. This is the viscoelastic property. Now it reflects the capacity of the tissue to absorb and dissipate the energy applied. The capacity of the tissue to recover to its original shape after the external force is applied is what is actually measured here. Now this is a picture of the ORA. <coughs> it analyzes the corneal response with a bidirectional applination process induced by a customized air jet pressurizing the cornea which provides an indirect assessment of the deformation in about 25 milliseconds or so. The corneal deformation is monitored by the infrared corneal reflex of an approximate diameter of three millimeters. So this is how it is done. It's a non-invasive process. It has got an advanced infrared electro-optical system. Uh, so uh, in a deformed state, or sorry, in a, in a normal state, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the infrared light which falls on the cornea is not detected by the uh, detector. So a metered collimated air pulse causes the cornea to move inwards, which at first applinates, that is it flattens, then it pa passes beyond the point of applination to produce concavity. At this point of applination, this infrared uh, light is detected by the uh, detector. And then, you know, after a millisecond of, uh, af after this applination is produced, the air pump is shut off and the pressure declines in a smooth pattern. As the pressure decreases, the cornea slowly regains the original position, again passing through the applinated state, at which it is again detected. So now, these two independent pressure values that is derived from the inward and outward applination events are represented in a graphic form as two well-defined peaks corresponding to the inward and appl outward application events. These are given P1, P2, uh, uh, I mean, uh, designated as P1 and P2, and the difference between these pressure is what is uh, what we call as corneal hysteresis. So this is how the plot looks like, and uh, maybe this is the you know inward pressure as the air puff is there, which causes the application. Then the pressure goes down, the air goes down, it goes into concavity and comes back again the applinate level, which is the P2 and the difference is the hysteresis. I mean, uh, other, other uh, parameters which can be derived is IOPG, which is a Goldman correlated application, then cornea, 
compensated IOP uh, corneal hysteresis is what we measured. The normal value is supposed to be 10.8 millimeters of mercury. Uh, corneal resistant factors is a, another a derived factor, which is a viscoelastic response weighted for the central corneal thickness. So normal hysteresis is 8 to 16 millimeters. Uh, resistance factor is 7 to 15 millimeters. There is no linear correlation between the hysteresis and CRF. The CRF has a stronger correlation with central corneal thickness and then corneal hysteresis with the, uh, uh, than corneal hysteresis with central thickness. Central thickness plays an important role in corneal elastic properties. So the other machine which measures is um, uh, Corvus ST. I mean, it's an machine flag based uh, uh, machine. Uh, it produces a lot of, you know, parameters which can be, as, I mean, which is derived from it. But what I said and then, uh, the basic idea of uh, measuring or accessing the corneal bi uh, biomechanics is to get an early idea about the state of the pathologic life, which is not evident clinically or even with our topography and tomographic things. So useful in refractive surgery, uh, CHF and CRF has been shown to be, you know, decreased significantly after our refractive procedures especially in LASIK after the flap creation and, uh, mm, you know, ablation which thins the cornea, thicker flaps, more change. So probably, you know, it helps us in I mean, deciding which procedure to be chosen uh, in terms of, you know, whether LASIK, whether uh, surfers, whether smile. That is one aspect. Probably some use in cat uh, cat cataract. Keratoconus, yes, it has been shown to be uh, you know, uh, give low values in of CH, uh, CH and CRF. Post linking, post cross linking, probably it gives a, you know, an idea about how stiff the cornea has become. Again, intraocular pressure and glaucoma has, has got some amount of limited uh, use. But then again, uh, how really useful it is for our daily routine clinical practice is a big if here, but probably in the future with, you know, more understanding of the what is what is happening within the stroma and what is the exact uh, physical properties of the corneal uh, tissue, we might be able to use it in a better way. Thank you.